Hello and welcome back to the last video of the fat metabolism. Today we're going to discuss two parts. We are going to focus on the ketone metabolism and the cholesterol synthesis. So let's start. We need acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is then converted into acetoacetyl-CoA. Okay. This is the first enzyme. Acetyl CoA acetyl transferase. We're going to combine two acetyl CoA together, as you can see here. This is done when we have already a lot of energy and acetyl CoA is very high. So, acetyl CoA with another acetyl CoA, acetyl acetyl CoA. Okay, that makes sense. So, here we have the HMG CoA synthase. HMG CoA is created. What happens here is we are going to add another acetyl CoA and get rid of our CoA. And uh, this uh, this happens because we have so much acetyl CoA. So HMG CoA is created. Then we continue to the ketone metabolism. We're going to use the HMG-CoA lyase, which is going to get rid of a, an acetyl-CoA. Okay, so then acetoacetate is created. Acetoacetate is one of the two ketone groups. To create the second ketone group, which is beta-hydroxybutyrate, we're going to use the beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase, which is going to convert NADH to NAD positive. This step is reversible. These two ketones are going to leave the mitochondrion and get inside the bloodstream. And uh, here, acetoacetate via a uh, decarboxylase can create acetone. And acetone is potentially harmful for the body because it can lower the bloodstream pH. Then the ketone groups get inside a cell and they're going to get used for energy. So beta hydroxybutyrate gets converted back into acetoacetate using the same enzyme we used before. In this case, it is the reverse, NAD positive to NADH. And here, the acetoacetate is going to get converted back into acetoacetyl-CoA. Do you remember? Okay. We are going to use succinyl-CoA and uh, create a succinate. And we are going to use a theophorase for that. Once we have acetoacetyl-CoA, we can just split it because this is the union of two acetyl-CoA. We just add a CoA and we get two molecules of acetyl-CoA using the acetyl-CoA acetyl transferase the same enzyme we used before for creating acetoacetyl-CoA. And that's it. This is the metabolism of the ketones. This occurs when uh, glucose levels are very, very, very low, like in a fasting state or in a ketogenic diet. We accumulate a lot of acetyl-CoA and the tissues can no longer use glucose because the glucose we have in the body is used for maintaining blood glucose levels. And uh, instead of using that glucose, we're going to use these ketones to transfer uh, the acetyl-CoA from one tissue to another. Indeed, from the liver to the tissues like muscles and brain and all those tissues that then can create acetyl-CoA without using actually glucose for that and we can get energy from it. Okay, so now let's see how the cholesterol metabolism works. So this step is very important. HMG-CoA can either go to acetoacetate, which we talked about earlier, 
and uh, it can also go to mevalonate outside the mitochondrion using the HMG CoA reductase. Of course, this is the rate limiting step because if this step is not occurring, then we are not going to create cholesterol. Of course, the same thing happens here. Mevalonate is then going to get converted into isopentyl pyrophosphate. Isopentyl pyrophosphate is converted into isoprene units. These processes indeed are very tricky. They are, there are more reactions than they appear here. And uh, as you can see here, the squalene is created from the squalene synthase that includes 21 steps, but I'm not going to put them all here. These are the main thing you need to know about the uh, synthesis of cholesterol. From mevalonate to isopentyl pyrophosphate, isoprene units, squalene, then from squalene to 7, the hydrocholesterol, and then to cholesterol. If you don't know from the 7 dihydrocholesterol, we can synthesize the vitamin D, which is very important for our body. The, basically, the sunlight is going to hit this molecule and uh, create cholecalcic ferrol. And then that molecule is going to go through some other processes to eventually get active. Cholesterol is then going to put, to get, uh, put into LDL and uh, VLDL lipoproteins. These are low density lipoprotein and very low density lipoprotein. These lipoproteins are going through the bloodstream to get uh, near the tissues and release that cholesterol to those tissues. This is uh, what it's doing is helping those tissues getting the cholesterol, which is uh, used for repair of the membrane because cholesterol is the main part of the cell membrane. Once the, the job is finished and, the, and repairing is done, then HDL, which is high density lipoprotein, is going to get all that extra cholesterol in the tissues back to the liver. And uh, this was the cholesterol metabolism and the ketone metabolism. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you understood it well. Leave me a comment down below if you have any doubts. The, this diagram is going to be on the description below. It's free, you can download it, start it, share this video with uh, a classmate and uh, like it if you want. Hope you enjoy it.